Hey, this is Jeff, and welcome back to the Fallout New Vegas All Skills 100 Dash. Last time we got all the skill points available from Old World Blues, with the exception of one skill book that's the reward for a side quest that would give us almost a thousand XP, so we didn't do that. We'll go back and get it if we need to, but I want to avoid excessive XP until we collect all the skill books in the base game. After last week's distractions, we're headed back to Repcon HQ to pick up where we left off, as that's the closest map marker we have to the next book. We're looking for the Allied Technologies offices, which is northwest of here, just south of Camp McCarran. You Damn, Damn it, that's, that's gonna, gonna stink. stink! Jinx! You like the sight? Aw, oh, damn! That's gonna leave a stain! Well, leading the fiends in here kind of worked, but I was hoping the ants would kill them and not the other way around. Still, microfusion cells. There's the book, in front of the soda machine. The next one is across the road in Vault 3, and that's always fun. With any luck, I can run past the ones in the ruins and get inside without picking up any more XP. Unlike the ones outside, the fiends in here aren't automatically hostile. But to talk our way past the greeter, we either need to be working for Diane, or get a great con disguise some other way, or pass this speech check. By the end of episode 2, I had everything I needed to buff my speech to 64, but after last week, it's up to 71. So my clever plan turned out to be redundant. Hello, I'm a drug dealer. If you'd like to get stoned, I'm your man. If you're fucking carrying, just fucking say so. Yeah, deliver to the boss. Business as usual. There we go. I hope this is the right room and I didn't just hack that terminal for nothing. There it is. Good. There is one flaw with just running past the ones outside to get in here with the friendly ones. They're probably all clustered around the vault door now. <laughs> But I thought if I wait 24 hours, they'll disperse and go back to their normal patrol routine. Oh, you they were just you leaving. From me. You like the sight well, of your own blood? I guess we'll do this the hard way. You like the sight of your own blood? Yep, they're still back there. The next book is in the bootlegging shack. I could have just headed straight north from Vault 3, but I don't want the XP from killing every fiend in the suburbs, so I'm going to take the road and cut west in the neighborhood of the Sunset Sarsaparilla headquarters. This area is swarming with Cazadores, which would usually be terrifying, but most of their damage is from poison. The stinger itself isn't that bad. Since we did Old World Blues last week, the artificial heart we got at Big Mountain makes us totally immune to poison, which makes them far less of a threat. Doesn't mean I want to stand around and let them sting me. Let's get inside. The book should be in the cellar. Right here by the chemistry set. And a key. I bet that's for the gun cabinet. I wasn't going to pick the lock because of the XP, but since it's a freebie. Gauss rifle. For a different character, that'd be pretty sweet. Still worth a lot of money. Those implants aren't going to buy themselves. Yeah, if I wasn't immune to poison, I would be so dead right now. <coughs> we have to be getting close to the extent of their pursuit radius. Anyway, our next stop is Vault 22, which is a little farther north, set into the same hill we're already on. Looks like they gave up. And there it is. The book is on the pest control level. Getting to it without using the elevator would be a huge hassle, which is why I made sure I got my repair up to 50 back in episode 2. Didn't realize at the time I was going to be taking a pretty big detour between there and here. Just up the stairs from the elevator on level 5 pest control, the book is on a table in this little lab. Now, if we can get back out without being mauled by spore carriers, that would be great. 
And even farther north on the same hill, we have the Followers Safe House, for which we already have the key, thanks mostly to some very generous donations of medical supplies to Julie Farkas. Well, there's Dr. Luria. May I help you? She drops by every few days to restock the fridge. I could use some stims. I can give you stims or radiation supplies. Which would you prefer? Regular stim packs, please. Here you go. Thank you. This is Courier Jeff's main player home, but Max is going to keep using the sink. The Central Intelligence Unit is a merchant with a lot of caps and can repair weapons and armor to full condition. Here's the skill book in this nightstand. Speaking of the sink, let's take anything of value and sell it so I can get my armor repaired. Between the fiends and the wildlife, it's completely broken, and then we can just fast travel back here. From the cliff outside the safe house, we should be able to see our next destination, the Brooks Tumbleweed Ranch. I think I can wiggle down this without plummeting to my death. Piece of cake. There's the book. And for some reason it's marked as stealing, but it's been a while since Max indulged his kleptomaniac tendencies. Right across the highway is the road leading to Charleston Peak, and there are three books up there. First one is in the Silver Peak Mine. Here we go. It's in the shack entrance, not the mine proper. Get out of here before we aggro those big horners. The next one's at Ranger Station Foxtrot. I'd prefer not to get any reputation with the NCR or Legion, so I'll skirt around this greeter if I can. Watch out! I hope she's not... No, they're not hostile to me. Maybe I still had some mantises following me. Length's out of her tent. Perfect distraction. Yeah, I totally planned that. Books right here on her desk. Not even stealing. Yoink. The ammo is. No sense provoking them. I'm just going to fast travel out of here before they calm down and try to talk to me. The perfect heist. If I don't get trampled by big horners. I think we're safe. And the next one's in Jacobstown. I love Michael Dorn, I love the character of Marcus, but he'd try to give me a quest and that would give me XP, so I'm just going to go around to the side of the compound and find a place where we can jump over the fence. Somewhat surprisingly, there's no invisible wall to prevent it, and it's not particularly difficult. Right here should do. Perfect. The book is in the first bungalow on the right if you come in through the gate, so this one, I think. Yes, right here in front of the stove, Grognak the Barbarian. Now, admittedly, leaving might be awkward. If I can, I'm going to fast travel out of here the second the loading screen is done. I don't think jumping the fence turns them hostile, but I don't want Marcus to wander over and force greet me either. So far, so good. Our next destination is Nellis Air Force Base, so there's really no point traveling back to the Tumbleweed Ranch. Closest map marker is... the clinic, I guess. I might as well stop in and see if Dr. Usanagi has any stim packs while I'm here. Easy way to get rid of some loot, and we'll be needing them on the way to Nellis, I'm sure. Okay, I can't even tell you how many times I've been to Nellis, and I've always done it one of two ways. Most often, I just hug the cliff on the left and gun it. You take some splash damage from the artillery, but you get to the gate before they can zero in on you. A few times, I've taken the train tunnel by Raoul's shack. You come out closer to the fence, so you're not under bombardment as long, but you have to pick two very hard locks, which A, I can't, and B, I don't want the XP even if I could. But the one thing I've never actually tried is doing it George's way, going through town and using the buildings as cover. Which, considering none of them even have a roof, I always assumed George was purposely trying to get you killed so he can keep your 300 caps. But I read his note a little closer, and he specifically mentioned using the northeast corner of two buildings with high cover. And so far, it seems to be working. I guess the idea is that the spotters can't see you because of the high walls, so they can't get a fix on your location with the artillery. 
Well, that one was a little close. They're reloading. Go! We are really close to the fence. I'll be damned. That actually works. Learn something new every day. Come and go as you like, help or don't help, I leave it up to you. But I hope you'll show my youngers that not every outsider needs to be blown up. Hey. Evening. Yes, I'm sure I can find many ways to help your people. Yeah, this bookshelf is dangerously overloaded. It's an obvious safety hazard. Let me see if I can fix that. There you go. You're welcome. Loyal should be at work, so his house should be empty. Looks like it. Yeah, this edition of Dean's Electronics had a misprint. Decimal in the wrong place, bunch of people got electrocuted. I'd better dispose of this. My work here is done. If that compass marker is Raoul's shack, it's a lot closer than I thought. Yeah, I think that's it. There are Death Claws and Cazadores east of here, and I thought I was going to have to deal with that, but I will not look a gift horse in the mouth. And, oh, right there it is, right beside the door. I think she's going to bed. Yes, good. Hidden. Mine. The next book is in Vault 34, one of my least favorite dungeons in the game for several reasons, but at least we don't have to do any of the quest-related stuff in there. From the Sharecropper Farms, it's pretty easy to find. There's a pass through the mountains just about due east of here, and when you get through that, it's just on the left on the other side of the hill. Okay, so the good news is the geckos chased me into the vault, that little parade attracted every ghoul in the atrium area, and by the time it was all over I only had to pick off two ghouls that survived. The bad news is there are a lot more in here, I'm taking rads, and I donated most of my rad away to Julie Farkas. And more bad news, even though some of them are called vault security guards and look like they're wearing armor, it's just a skin. You can't loot their armor like you could a non-feral ghoul. Which is a shame, because Vault 34 security armor is the best light armor in the base game. It weighs the same as my leather armor, but the damage threshold is more than twice as good, so I was hoping to pick up some while I was here for the book. The good news is, the book is on the armory level, but it isn't in the armory itself, which would be a huge hassle to get open. And the back of my mind's telling me there's something in that room, but let's not get distracted. The bad news is it's close quarters, and there are a bunch of tough ghouls in here that we probably aren't going to be able to sneak around. But hope springs eternal. <laughs> there it is, right on the end table. Alright, let's get out of here. And my radiation sickness is getting worse. Great. Vault 34 security armor. I knew I remembered there was something good in this room when we walked past it on the way to the armory. Might as well take the helmet, too. Let's have a look. Damage threshold 10, even in almost broken condition. Still better than my leather armor. Might as well put it on. If we can get out of here without killing anything else, our next stop is Cannibal Johnson's cave right next door. His compass tick is green, so if it was just him, it'd say detected, not caution. I think it must be the geckos outside. New Vegas sometimes gets confused about your detection status if it loads a new interior while you're in combat. His bed isn't owned, I wonder... Well, that's weird, but I'll take a free health fill up. Didn't change the caution status, though. Need to be hidden to take the book. Is my light on? Nope. Ooh, that fixed it. Yoink. Now I'll just make sure we don't step on the traps on the way back out. Okay, we really need to thread the needle here. There are cazadores between us and the lake, and death claws on the hill to the left. No, there are death claws on the right, too. Run away! Oh, and more of them in the train yard. Ah, <clears throat> oh, they're all over the place. We're dead. Ah! 
Most enemies with no ranged attacks you can outrun or at least reduce the number of hits you take because they have to attack and then catch back up, but you can't outrun Deathclaws. Well, I'll just keep spamming stem packs and hope we find a door. I don't think Deathclaws can open doors. I see something on the compass. There might be hope yet. Especially if I get beyond their pursuit radius. Try to use the terrain to confuse their pathing. I think we just about got away with that. Ah, there are the Cazadores. Well, I'm immune to poison, so screw you guys. I cannot believe we got away with that. Anyway, where's the book? Ah, down here in the cellar. Tales of a Junktown Jerky Vendor. The next one is due east at the Bitter Springs Recreational Area. Little campground by the lake, not Bitter Springs proper, where the NCR base is. What's in here? rats. You know what? I don't think they can get through my damage threshold. Knocking me around is kind of annoying, though. All right. See ya. Okay, there's one on the scavenger platform in the middle of Lake Mead and one in the fisherman's pride shack on the shore. And I'm going to swim to both because you can't be attacked while you're underwater in this game. Okay, we're going to climb out of the water, grab the book, and dive back in. We can get to it. Um, it's in this pile somewhere. Just grab them all and sort them later. Oh, there it is. Bye! And my armor condition is dangerously low. Yeah, the only drawback to the Vault 34 security armor is that it has significantly less item health than the leather armor, so you have to repair it more often. But after the pounding we've taken today, it'd be kind of unfair to call it flimsy. <laughs> And that's the Fisherman's Pride Shack dead ahead. The book is here on the... T no, that's Salisbury Steak. Don't! Oh, apparently Lake Lurks can open doors. Been really good about avoiding XP, but you gotta go. Anyway, book. Book, 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 book. There it is, right on the nightstand. Okay, I made a quick detour to Big Mountain to get my armor repaired, which means I can get to Camp Forlorn Hope without walking all the way from the Fisherman's Shack. The 188 rest stop is a lot closer. We can go to Boulder City and cut south from there. If I can get in and out of here without talking to anybody, that'd be great. I want the NCR and Legion to stay blissfully unaware of my existence as long as possible, and if I don't get any quests, I can't complete them by accident. And why are these guys freaking out? Probably the bloat flies in the graveyard. Anyway, the book should be back in this corner. Yep. And unfortunately, it's stealing. Unfortunate, because they're looking at me. I mean, fair enough. Some rando walks into the command post and starts sneaking around. I guess I'd watch him, too. They got bored. Yoink. Sorry, somebody told me this was a casino. But I'll just go. The next book is in the Lucky Jim Mine, which is on this side of the mountain, but I need to skirt around No Man's Land and Nelson. If we go along the edge of the River Canyon... What's that compass marker? Oh, that's the um, Abandoned Brotherhood of Steel Bunker. We'll be coming back here later, so I might as well get the map marker. This is the kickoff spot for dead money. There's the Lucky Jim mine. And it's a lot more of a hassle to get there than it needs to be because of the invisible wall abuse in New Vegas. Look at this. <laughs> I mean, a lot of the time they line up with steep terrain features, so it's not as obvious, but here they're not even pretending. If you've watched many of my other New Vegas videos, you probably know this is my only real complaint about the game. If you use invisible walls to keep players inside the playable area of the map or out of holes where the only way out is to fast travel, fine. 
But when you use them to force a linear story progression or to restrict movement where the player should clearly be able to walk, it's just annoying and immersion breaking and frankly lazy. And I guess I have to go the long way around because the designers really wanted me to know that fire geckos can breathe fire. Because, you know, the name didn't give it away. There it is on the bottom shelf. That looks safe. Good enough. I think coming down the cliff brought me out closer to the camp than where the greeter is posted. I don't know if I can pull the same trick at Cottonwood Cove as I did at Forlorn Hope, but I'm going to give it a shot. The book is in the command center, the big concrete building. And I don't know if anybody else here will force greet me if I haven't talked to the greeter, but let's find out. Their compass markers are green, so they're not hostile. So far, so good. Don't want to talk to Severus. He's a good way to farm Legion fame if you want it, but we don't. The book is in the upstairs office. Aurelius isn't on the balcony, which means he's probably inside. Yep. But he doesn't seem interested in talking. Good. Awe, true to Kaisar. Whatever you say, pal. Yoink. Now let's beat feet before anybody gets wise. Fast travel somewhere safe. The next book is in Camp Searchlight, but I don't want to risk walking out of here on foot. Another perfect heist. That means I'm going to have to reverse the order I was planning to pick up a few books, but so be it. And I'm already confused. I was going to do it east to west, which means I'm doing it west to east now. Duh. First stop, Wolfhorn Ranch. This place has great significance to the courier's backstory, which we are going to completely ignore. The book is right here by the fridge. Next up, the Matthews Animal Husbandry Farm. The book should be upstairs in the first barn. And it's ironic because everybody's dead and their barometer malnourished, and the book is... The Wasteland Survival Guide. Classic Fallout Dark humor. Canonically, the Wasteland Survival Guide in New Vegas is the one Moira Brown published in Fallout 3, so you could take that to imply the Lone Wanderer did a half-assed job with her quest. But since it gives the courier four skill points in survival when you read it, I think the book is fine, and these settlers were just really unlucky or didn't have the comprehension perk or something. And our next stop is the old nuclear test site, which is unsurprisingly irradiated and swarming with ghouls, and some of them are reavers, so this should be fun. Yeah, I see the fence up there. Probably best if I sneak in. Eight reds a second. There's the book hidden under a diary I don't have time to read. Um, I'm going to take some Radex. <laughs> so much for sneaking. And now I have radiation poisoning. Ah! On the bright side, when they hit me from behind, it knocks me forward. So it takes more time for them to catch up again. And if that was a Reaver, they must have really nerfed them compared to what they were in Fallout 3, when they were arguably the scariest enemy in the game. And yeah, they don't seem to have the missile attack in New Vegas either. Anyway, I know this route isn't as efficient as what I originally planned, but hey, I'm improvising. There's Searchlight. Try not to get killed going down this cliff. The book should be in the church on the far side of town. This place was hit by a Legion dirty bomb attack, so there are ghouls and NCR armor all over the place. I'm surprised the green filter hasn't kicked in yet. Anyway, the book should be in the basement. And geckos. Well, at least they killed the ghoul who was chasing me. There's the book. Did I get it? Another ghoul. But... Well, if they're going to fight each other, I'm not going to look that gift horse in the mouth. Yes, I got it. Might as well read it. Okay, I know this might seem sleazy, but since when has Max acted like a model citizen? 
I know I refuse to help or even talk to the NCR, but if I lead this parade of ghouls and scorpions toward the camp on the outskirts of town, they should stall them long enough for me to get to safe fast travel distance. Yep. Your tax dollars at work. Back to my originally planned order. The next book is in the Hidden Supply Cave. If it wasn't for the invisible walls, I could have walked basically straight here from Searchlight. Whatever. I've done pretty well with the XP budget this week, and we have no choice but to pick this lock. I think this place is related to a quest, and you might be able to get a key, but I'm not sure about that. Pay attention to what I'm doing. There we go. There's the book on one of the crates. All right, I'm going to head back to Big Mountain to sell loot and get a rad scrub, and then we're back on plan. The next book is in the Nipton Town Hall, and this is where my dreams of never meeting the Legion or the NCR might come crashing down. Full Pace Force greets you in front of the building to gloat about killing everybody, and while they don't turn hostile unless you intentionally provoke them, it does mean the game will start tracking my Legion rep. Try to sneak around from the back of the building, but I'm pretty sure it's a scripted event, so he'll start the conversation even if you're technically undetected. Still worth a shot, assuming you can get behind the building at all. This is exactly the kind of place the game would put invisible walls to force the story down a linear path. No way. I'm impressed. Well, sort of does kind of make all the other places they occur seem even more arbitrary by comparison. I think the West Wing is ever so slightly narrower, so I don't have as far to sneak from the corner to the door. Yeah. And you can totally get back here from this side, so I guess there was no point having an invisible wall on the other side. Forget I said anything. Now, where are they? Oh, something's got them distracted. Maybe the scorpions in the trailer park? Who cares? Go, go! Yes! Some of these bodies are booby-trapped, and there are legion hounds roaming the halls, but... Who cares? I feel like I already beat the hard part. <laughs> Here's the book on the mayor's desk. And I might as well loot anything else I don't have to pick a lock to get. Now, if I can get the Pip-Boy up and fast travel the split second the loading screen is done. Oh yes. Another perfect heist. <laughs> you know, except for the part where I was mauled by dogs. Next up, the Mojave Outpost. Well, this is kind of awkward. Did you see that? That crazy bitch just attacked me out of nowhere. Who the hell are you and what are you talking about? I'm trying to steal a book here. No time for strangers, huh? I should probably follow your example. That's the last time I pick up a straggler on the road, believe me. I think that was the guy who gets in a gunfight with his girlfriend over star bottle caps, and then the survivor tells you their side of the story. And the whole bar is apparently going to join me behind the counter. It's a random encounter that I thought kicked off near the racetrack. I must have gotten close enough to trigger it, and then he followed me all the way here to force greet me. Lacey's watching me like a hawk, and honestly, I don't blame her. You know what this calls for. Grab and hide. The next one is at the Mesquite Mountain Campground, just about due north of the outpost. There are some giant rad scorpions around here. Put a move on you. Oh, fake. Oh, fake! They're not as much of a threat since we're immune to poison, but their claws still hurt. The book should be in the first tent. They can't follow you in here, but will probably be cornered. 
cross that bridge when we go. Or maybe they can follow you in here. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay. Just take everything I say with a grain of salt, apparently. Anyway, the next book is right down the hill at the gas station where Route 15 turns up toward the Mojave Outpost. Rad X, that'll come in handy in about five minutes. And more. Eh, two out of three ain't bad. And... The register... Caps... And the book. Yeah, that's it. On the shelf out front, near the cash register. The next one is at the highway patrol station just up the road. It's the base for some Viper gunslingers, but it's set up so the first time you arrive they're being attacked by some escaped convicts. Presumably from the NCR Correctional Facility, even though they're not actually marked as powder gangers. Hopefully that'll provide enough of a distraction that I can get in and out without being shot too much. Or not. If you guys even knew what this plasma rifle would do to you, you wouldn't be so rude. Hey! The book you like that? is right here on this desk, if they stop knocking me around. I hope you realize the only reason you get to live Come another on. day is because I don't want the XP. The next one is in the Mesquite Mountain Crater, and this whole hillside is swarming with ghouls. Any chance you'd rather go down there and deal with the vipers for me? Cool, thanks. Anyway, the closer you get, you run into tougher variants, and the crater itself is heavily irradiated and occupied by reavers. A lot of enemies in New Vegas are variable depending on your level, but the reavers up here are hard-coded. The good news is, as we discovered at the nuclear test site, reavers are still tough in New Vegas, but a mere shadow of what they were in Fallout 3. Now we're into the rads. Guess it's time to take some of that radex we found. We'll stay out of the water as much as we can. The other good news is that the terrain is rough enough around here to confuse the AI pathing a little bit. You know, how you can juke around rocks and trees quicker than enemies can. There's plenty of that to work with here. Like that. It won't be able to jump over the fence rail, so it'll have to turn around and follow me. And even a split second can be the difference between getting hit or not. There's a hostile robot in here, so we don't want to dawdle. There's the book on the shelf right inside the door. Oh yeah, ghouls can open doors. Bye. The next book is in the Prospector's Den on the hill behind Prim. Spoiler warning, the prospectors are dead, and it's being used as a hideout by some raiders. Well, I'm not sure there are actually any generic raiders in New Vegas. They have their own factions, like fiends and like vipers. That? I think the vipers are mostly on the other side of the map. The ones in the highway patrol station in here might actually be jackals. Whoever they are, if they want to shoot me a little bit, as long as they don't jam like me up, that? that's fine. I have good armor, I just want to steal one book and I'll go. You like that? You guys are really testing my patience. There it is. Well, they left me a nice path to the door, so they get to raid another day. And right down the hill is the Bison Steve Casino, where the next book is. I hope I can just jump down there. It better not make me go around to the bridge. Nice. Game seems determined to make my complaining about invisible walls seem petty today, but I'll take it. The book is somewhere in the gift shop, right here on the floor behind the counter. If I can get out of here before every escaped con in the building gets involved, that'd be great. The next book is at Lone Wolf Radio, back across the road in the hills between here and Good Springs. Hopefully the convicts won't get too close to the NCR garrison on the other side of the road. And hopefully neither will I. Uh-huh. Vindicated. This is some serious invisible wall BS right here. Completely unnecessary. I guess it's to keep you from bypassing the mined bridge if you're coming from Good Springs, which if you take the route the game wants you to... Hey, where the hell do you think you're going? Prim is off limits. Oh, sorry. I was just there. But I can see why it's off limits. 
Be careful. You may want to talk to Lieutenant Hayes. He's in a tent down the road. Just stay on the west side of the overpass if you don't want to get shot. Right. That guy. The invisible wall is probably there so you don't miss his little greeting. Now I've talked to somebody from the NCR, so the game will be tracking my NCR rep. All that work, and then I get ambushed by the greeter in Prim. Damn it. There it is. This place was supposedly involved in a quest that was cut before the game was released. And I thought I got my frame rate issue solved last week, but it's been tanking since I left the Bison Steve. The problem was another one of my favorite rant topics, Steam. This PC doesn't have a network connection, it doesn't even have a network card, and I'm pretty sure the frame rate issues in the first two episodes were because the Steam client couldn't phone home, so it was freaking out and pegging the CPU every so often. I forgot I used to use a different launcher that starts the game without Steam, and in episode 3 I started using it again, and that seemed to solve it, until now. Anyway, the book should be somewhere close to the bed. There it is. In this case, it might just be that Windows gets cranky if you don't reboot it once in a while, so I'm going to save, reboot, and be back in a flash. Okay, I'm back and I have good news. The Pip-Boy faction screen still doesn't list the NCR, so getting force greeted by the trooper in Prim didn't screw us over. Apparently the game only starts tracking reputation when you actually gain fame or infamy, not when you just talk to somebody from that faction. Which I should have known because we talked to Lieutenant Haggerty at Helios 1 back in Episode 2. We now have all the books from the base game, except for two on the strip that I'm putting off for specific reasons, so this is a pretty good place to call it a day. But, chasing that all-important viewer engagement, how about a teaser for next week? There are a lucky 13 skill books added by the Lonesome Road DLC, the last story DLC released for New Vegas. It's supposed to be the final challenge in the whole game, where the courier finally learns the truth behind the numerous clues about their past scattered around the base game and the other DLC, and it recommends you be at least level 25 before you start. We haven't seen any of those clues because we've completely avoided anything related to the main quest, and we're only level 11, so of course we're going in next week. You may be wondering why we're not doing Dead Money next, since the level recommendation is lower. Two related reasons. First, Dead Money strips your gear when you enter, so you have to make do with what you find in the DLC. And just like Old World Blues, once you start it, you're committed. You can't come home until you finish the Dead Money questline. Without our armor in Q35, our survivability will depend on our inherent skills and attributes, so we'll want them to be as high as possible before we go in. To that end, as you saw last week when we started Lonesome Road to lock in the lowest XP multiplier, we can come and go as we please between the Divide and the Mojave proper. So we can go to Big Mountain to sell loot and use the auto dock, come back to the clinic for our last implant when we hit level 12, or whatever. If we hit level 14 before we find all the skill books in Lonesome Road, we'll come back and do dead money at that point. So now I am going to call it a day. Join me next week to see how many ways the Divide can kill us. I'm shooting for less than one death per skill book, but put your guess in the comments. If you're enjoying this, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next week.